Let's now discuss the methods in which the mechanism can be bypassed. We mentioned before what can happen if you use a path rule. If you're using a file hash rule, you need to make sure a hash rule don't match a code to bypass it. You can open a file in a hex editor and change a bit hoping it won't affect the operation of the program. There are quite a lot of safe bits behind the file header, so users shouldn't hit the bit. This can serve to bypass existing security solutions. Internet zone rules are generally not very secure since they apply only to Internet Explorer. If you're using a different web browser, they don't work at all. To bypass a certificate rule, you need to sign the file with a different certificate. This might seem difficult, but in fact there are Visual Studio tools that can generate a certificate that can be used to sign a file. This doesn't change the trustworthiness of a file and its issuer, but this might be used to bypass the software restriction policy. What's important is that all these solutions will only work if you've implemented a model that shouldn't be used in the first place. This is the everything is allowed except for what is explicitly disallowed model. Now everyone is trying to think of ways to make their favorite instant messaging software slip in. If you're working in the opposite model, all such attempts are doomed to fail. This doesn't mean, however, that if a user has local administrative permissions, they will not have control over this mechanism and over other security solutions. It's true that central policies, policies that are set by a domain administrator, overwrite any local administrator permissions. But before this happens, a computer needs to be made aware of the central policies. During startup, before you log on, a computer connects to a domain controller and downloads a security policy. It's saved to a registry. This means that a user who is a local administrator might erase data in the registry key and revoke permissions of a system account to what is left, to an empty key. The rules will not appear after another restart. This is a simple mechanism that you need to remember is available to local administrators. Application control rules, the latest version of the mechanism we're discussing, have been significantly streamlined. There are only three rules, a path rule, a file hash rule, and a publisher rule. As we mentioned, the Internet Zone rule was controversial from the start. Just like before, you might specify program types to which the rules will apply. You can select from executable files, the MSI installer files, scripts, and DLLs. Your role is to create a list of software that will be allowed to run. The previous solution did not require running any additional system services. Setting up application control rules, on the other hand, will not have an effect unless you run an additional service. This service is designed to audit and oversee their operation. It is by default in manual startup mode. As part of a configuration procedure, you need to switch it to automatic mode. To make implementation of this solution simpler, you can create default rules. There are three default rules. The first default rule is meant to allow users to run all programs that are installed in the Programs File folder or subfolders, which aren't appropriate locations for any programs. The second rule allows users to run components of an operating system that need to be trusted. The third rule allows an administrator group to do anything, to run all files and programs. The rules are designed to smooth the process of protecting your system. Don't shriek from creating the rules in the everything is blocked mode. A default rule will cause some files and programs to be accessible. Some files and programs won't run. The ability to generalize rules is an interesting feature that we'll look into in a moment. 
You can indicate a digitally signed file and say, for example, make a rule that is not applicable to this file, but a more general one. This will apply to specified versions of a piece of software or to all programs from the issuer of a certificate. Default rules aren't perfect. They're too general. A general security solution will most of the times be inefficient, but this problem has been solved as well. There's a rule generator. Instead of creating rules manually and on your own, you can indicate a folder and instruct the tool to generate rules applying to all files in a specified folder.